Hi everyone, my name is Steve Karlovsky, and I'm the coordinator of the Gebhardt Woods Dulcimer and Traditional Music Festival. I sure wish we could all be here together at Gould Park this weekend for our yearly dose of fun and great live music, but not this year. Instead, we'll take some time to celebrate 30 years of the Gebhardt Woods Festival here online. We'll check in with some of the performers from this year's lineup. We'll enjoy some highlights from last year's 30th festival. And we'll dip into our video archive and share dozens of festival moments all the way back to Gebhard Woods Dulcimer Festival number one in 1988. Moments you've never seen or heard before, unless you happen to be there. So let's get started. First things first, this video mini festival is dedicated to our departed dear friend, Jerry Santoni. Here's why. Um, so, so elsewhere in the program book, you can hear a little bit about what Jerry's contributions to the festival have been. Um, I, I have a, a, an interest in, um, in, in history and, and, and video and archival kinds of things. Um, so from the very beginning of the festival, um, the, the very first festival, Jerry came out um, with his wife and their son and a video camera and started taking some video, uh, uh, just, I'm sure, home movies, right? I and mean, that's pretty much all it was at that point. Um, and then uh, Jerry became aware that the, uh, the festival has use for video for doing things like, like grant applications and things like that. Jerry then um, kind of took it upon himself to become a regular videographer of the festival, and perhaps from the next, vi from the next festival on, pr uh, shot video of virtually all the performances and, and, and some, uh, some workshop kinds of things, the things that the grants folks would want to see to know what our festival is about. So Jerry did this for 22 years and uh, I'm sure compiled a large stack of VHS tapes and, um, and, and uh, a few years back, although he, although he did uh, uh, help us with video last, last festival as well, he did, he did one day. And uh, so Jerry, uh, at some point, said, time, time to pass this job on to somebody else. But then he went off and he took all that video and he digitized it. So right around, in fact, it was probably at Glenda's memorial, um, Jerry uh, came up to us and said, well, I have, I have the video. I'd like to give it to somebody on the festival. And I said, well, why don't you give it to me? And I followed Jerry to his house, and he presented me with, 191 DVDs and said, here you go. And uh, so those of you that have been on the, uh, the Gephardt Woods website or have been on YouTube and done any searches for the festival, uh, there are now, uh, there's a growing collection of performances from past festivals that are up online. And those, uh, those performances are there because somebody took the time to record them so they would not be lost. And uh, so they're not lost. We have, we have all this digital footage we have. It's, it's something close to 400 hours of video. And uh, we'll be mining that for years to come and making it available to people. And I just, and I just want to thank Jerry um, for, for doing that. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. And I think Neil is going to come up for just a second. Thank you, and thank you as well. <laughs> yeah, I do. Oh, Jerry and I have been friends for like 25 years at least, and it's all been around music. And he plays the hammer dulcimer, and he plays it exquisitely, and he plays it uh, with incredible passion, and he plays a lot of things in minor keys. That's one of his absolute loves. And but he is a good friend, and he has done a wonderful work for the festival, and I think we can in part say that we are here today because of, of the past that includes Jerry's work. And so here's what I get to say to you, Jerry, to Jerry Santoni, an appreciation for 22 years of documenting the history of the Gebhard Woods Dulcimer Festival through the medium of film. And that's what he's done, and done a splendid job of it, and a very dedicated job to doing the filming of this festival. So, congratulations. Thank you.
Thanks so very much. Uh, Steve, you wrote a beautiful uh, article in the um, booklet, and I want to thank you for that. I want to thank Neil and all the volunteers. If I started to thank everybody, I might miss somebody because there's so many people who have contributed to this wonderful festival here. And uh, it's, it's something that goes on year by year because of the volunteers and the fine work of the people on the Board of Hands. So I do thank you very kindly for this, Neil, and from everybody else and from Steve for this wonderful plaque. I will treasure it indeed, and I'll put it next to my Sam Rosetta Delsimer as I play my minor tune. So thank you so very much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Marsha from the Gephardt Woods Dulcimer Board. We're so disappointed we won't be able to meet together with you this year at our festival. But, uh, you know, the funny thing is, usually we worry about the weather. Uh, that's our biggest concern and not pandemics. We hope you'll enjoy this uh, virtual offering of our festival, though, and just know that we're already planning for next year, and we'll be seeing you in Gould Park in 2021.
Okay, now it comes the tricky part. You take these two fingers and go to the sixth fret, you know, go to the sixth fret of the middle and the bass and you slide. So you go strum, slide, strum. So sound like this, sounds kind of bluesy. Yeah, let me play you the whole phrase. It's really nice. It's, it's, we have to be quiet because it's, it's, it's very... Dolphins don't carry that well. Listen. So it goes... Da, da, da. Let, hold it out. You know, let it really breathe. This is really emotional here, right? Six, five, six, seven, six, five, four. And you don't have to do all those pull-offs. You can pluck it. Then it goes... Two, three, two, then third fret of it, then O strum. You can even pull off that O from the second fret if you want. Or let's take it from this zero six six that slide. Want to try that? So you strum, slide, then strum the zero six six. Now go to the middle string and go seven, six, five, then strum zero four four, then two O oh, O. Oh. Strum, three, two, middle string, third fret. Now, you, if you want, it's not in the music, you could pull the second, you could pull this off. You could pull off from the second fret to the O. Oh, okay. That's kind of slick. So it's list, watch, watch, watch. It goes like this. Right now it's written like this. It's, it's, it's nicer like this. Ooh. Sumptuous. It's actually easier that way, isn't it? It's easy as chalk. It's not chalk. Yeah. Here, let me play you the whole thing. And then I'm going to teach you the Irish. You ready? And, uh... That's your part. You can do a double slide, right? pull off that second from the second fret. Just a delayed pull off, I guess you'd call it. What's to know about Rick Thumb? He can build them, he can play them, and he's great in a jam. And he's one of the finest hammer dulcimer instructors around. From his hideaway in the Missouri Hills, here's Rick Thumb. Hey, Gephardt Woods. Welcome to the concert. It's a pleasure to be part of it. Tonight I'm going to play a little uh, piece that I wrote on a, a fall day, a beautiful fall day. I was standing on the front porch of the Christmas house and watching the Apple Butter Festival close up. It was a beautiful fall day and, and I just decided to let my hammers go where they wanted to. And out of it came this little song that I call The Front Porch Walls. I hope you enjoy it.
Thank you all. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that. So a few years back, I was, uh, I don't do coffee in the morning. So I jump into the shower. That's what wakes me up. And when that hot water hits the back of my neck, I wake up and my conscious mind says good night to my subconscious mind and my subconscious mind disappears and I'm back in the conscious mind and back in the world. And uh, one morning the shower hit me and I'm standing in the shower singing a song. And all of a sudden I realized, I don't know this tune that I'm singing. Where did I get this from? So I yell over the shower door and my wife's fooling around in there and, and uh, I go, have you ever heard that song before? And she yelled back, no. And when she yelled back, no, the entire dream flashed back to me. I dreamt writing this song, learning it, and practicing it. And I got pretty excited, so I jumped out of the shower and toweled off and ran into my office where I keep my dul dulcimer. And, and uh, I looked at it, picked up the hammers, and sure enough, there was the tune, just sitting there waiting to be played. And so I call it Spider on the Bedpost. Thank you all, stay safe, and hope to see you all in person soon. The other way I play my chords, and, and this is a, a pretty rhythmic way, is I take my left hand and leave it on the fifth, I take my right hand and do one, three, eight, three. One, three, eight, three. Let me try it. One, three, eight, three. One, three, eight, three. Now, I take my left hand and I do the fifth, but I don't do them together. I do it opposing. way to do a chord in rhythm to a reel. A reel is 4-4 four, four time. The timing on that is 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. You have to hit and before you do the change. So your right hand is always going to be the hand making the change. If your right hand dominant like the majority of the people are, you left hand in there. So I got away with saying that. If your right hand dominant like I am, then the change comes very easy because it's your right hand leading off that change. 
while the left hand's hitting, the right hand moves up to the next string. So it's going to go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay? Now when you're playing a song like... Okay, what I did was I did a chord there for the, the second line of it. And that shows you how a chord will fit in. Now, all I did with the chord was I played three of the notes of the chord in a rhythm that fits the song. The question was, when I do chording, do I hit them together if I replace them in a measure, or do I do them single, like the pattern? What I just played to you was single, kind of like the pattern, only what I did instead of doing one, two, three, four, I did one, two, one. I shortened it into yeah. three notes, okay. but they would fit. I could still go. Now, to, to give you an example. So you can do it either way. All it right. gives it a different feel to do it. And that was just the straight chording pattern. Then. So you can actually do just about anything as long as you're hitting the notes in the chord and you're keeping somewhat to the rhythm or in time. You don't even have to stay to the rhythm. You have to stay in time, okay? But change the accents of the rhythm. You'll find that it's going to work. And the weirder you can get your dynamics or your beats, the accents, sometimes the more fun it is. Dana Hamilton's the best at it. If you listen to any Dana's tapes, Dana's out there and he'll do rhythms in the middle of a song that are just way out there. And they make the song sound so unique and so dynamic. And when I watch Dana play, I mean, he's just a hoot to jam with because you'll be playing along and all of a sudden, the next thing you know, he's over doing a calypso beat in the middle of a, of a reel, you know? <laughs> and, and it works. And you think, wow, that was pretty cool. It's uh, about a hundred years old. It's a little temperance tune that was written for children. It comes from a little book called Marching Songs for Young Crusaders, subtitled Songs for the Cold Water Army. So you can imagine what they were being temperate, temperate, temperate about. Um, I'll tell you three things about it, and then I'll just play it for you. The first is that it is sexist, and I know it. And so now we all know it, so we can kind of let that go. It's, it's squarely in its period in time, and that's the way it was. The second thing is that you may not agree with the theology, or you may, and we're going to have to set that one aside too. And the third one is my standard joke about this tune, that it was very likely written by Nancy Reagan, who would probably, though, not admit it because she would not admit to being over 100 years old. And that is because, oddly enough, oddly enough, it has a rather contemporary chorus and title. The tune is called Say No. The chorus says, Just Say No. I think it's possible she may have heard it in the Sunday school as a kid, and picked it up a few hundred years later and decided to use it as a motto. Anyway, here is Say No. Yes, we'll show. And 
Phil Cooper and Susan Urban. Let's give a warm yeah, round of yeah. applause for February Sky. Thank you. So, this is a tribute to four people of the many I've known in my life who do wonder, do or have done wonderful art. The first one is Phil's late mother, the quilter. The uh, cabinet maker is Steve Francois, who's also a wonderful musician. I believe he can't do that anymore because he's lost most of his sight. The puppet maker is Margaret Nelson. The songwriter, the pronoun is male, but it could be any number of different people who do amazing things with words. It's called Living Works of Art. It does have a chorus. If you pick it up, feel free to sing. The lovely gray hair with patterns, cloth, and thread. She's making heirloom quilts to grace her family's walls and beds. Each tiny stitch is sewn with someone dear to her in mind. And every quilt's a gift of love worked into the design. When we're on by deadlines with the speed of our command may we find the time and space we need for working with our hands slow the pounding of our blood and heal our minds and hearts turning raw materials to living works of art He strips away the paint and varnish, old and dull and cracked. And then he stains and seals with care to bring the wood grain back. And when the final finish dries, he views the piece with pride. The spirit of the man who made it smiling at his side when we're fast around by deadlines wish that speed at our command may we find the time and space we need for working with our hands slow the pounding of our blood and heal our minds and hearts Turning raw materials to living works of art. Paper, fabric, ribbon, yarn, some new and some antique. She turns them into puppets that you'd swear can move and speak. Back ladies, dragons, angels, wise men, fragile, sweet, or tough. Each one will tell its story if you listen near enough. When we're fenced around by deadlines, we start speed at our command. 
day we find the time and space we need for working with our hands. So the pounding of our blood and heal our minds and hearts, taking raw materials to living works of art. Where it's move and drag and click When he writes a song He uses paper and a pick Mirroring our lives in words Whose truth we can't deny He sings us into sameness When he makes us laugh and cry when we're fenced around by deadlines, we shall speed at our command. May we find the time and space we need for working with our hands. So the pounding of our blood can heal our minds and hearts, turning raw materials to living works of art, turning raw materials to living works of art. Debbie Duggins. I live in Morris. 
I've been a festival attendee, a volunteer, and now a board member because I love this music. I hope you do too.
Mary Z. Cox was to make her first visit to the Gebhard Woods Festival this year, and we hope she can join us in 2021. Her brand new CD is The Adventures of Dulcimer Dog. She's a master of both the mountain dulcimer and the banjo. Say hello to Mary Z. Cox. Yeah. 
Now we traced our uh, ancestry back to 1578 in northern Mexico, wearing that name on the second generation to speak English. So why am, why am I in New England? You know how hard it is trying to make a living as a harpsichordist in Tucson? <laughs> Don't try it. It doesn't work. How many times can you play your cheating heart on that keyboard? <laughs> And it doesn't work in colonial garb, either. <laughs> I don't care how many times Igor Kipnis does it. So, well, here, is a, uh, here are a couple uh, uh, estampia y tanzas, uh, dances, uh, from the Mexican court of around uh, 1625. Uh, the, first one is a, uh, the first one is a misa liturgica, which became a dance. In other words, a piece of church music that was so nice they decided to turn it into a dance. And the second is an estampier. So, uh, I'm not into world music. I only play music of my own heritage, you understand. <laughs> and when you say colonial music, I say what kind? Mexican, English, Scottish? It covers the Western Hemisphere, doesn't it? South Suburban Delsimer and Folk Music Society. Boy, that sounds like an impressive group, all right. <laughs> A sound group. You want to hire us? Hire you? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Shirley. Where Tucson. are you from? Park Forest. Are you um, having a good time? I'm having a very good time. Good. What's your name? My name is Danny. I already told you. Where are you from? Chicago Heights. Chicago Heights. This is Katie. Katie, where are you from? Down Down? Oh, that's right. You were in before, too. And your name? Mary Francis. Mary Francis? Fritz. Fritz. Oh, I know Mary. I know who your mom is. <laughs> and where are you from? You're from DeKalb, then, right? 
Hi, what's your name? Darcy. Darcy? Where do you live, Darcy? Downers Grove. Downers Grove, too. Well, that's great. Now we get... I, do you know this girl behind you? She's your sister. I thought she might be. Moni, Illinois. Okay, are you having a good time? Fantastic time. Did you just get here? I just got here about an hour ago. I had to work today. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your first time at Gebhardt Woods? First time at Gebhardt Woods. It will not be my last. Good. Well, have a good time. Thanks for coming. My name is Glenda. Where are you from? I'm from Harvey, Illinois. Are you having a good time? I'm having just a marvelous time. How many other times have you been here? I think this is maybe the fifth time. Very good. Fifth weekend. Well, thank you. Max E.T. and Moto Fukushima and Ignacio Rivas Pixio, please welcome House of Waters.
uh, across the bridges and then I braise or solder the wraps so that they don't unwind. And that's usually the problem. If the wraps unwind, they'll buzz or the strings will go dead. Or go. Uh, so where they cross the bridges, uh, if, if there's a lot of friction there, the windings eventually can break and then the instrument, the strings will go dead and leave. Replacing. So I, I use Delrin bridge caps, which are a low friction. And I've got to design the instrument so that they work well and sound good with the low friction material. But then that gives me an advantage um, both in the durability of the wound strings and in the tuning of the instrument. The uh, low friction allows the strings to uh, slide across the bridge when you tune. And it stays in tune better. Uh, it's easier. So we could take two instruments that have exactly the same pitches and string lengths, and make and same uh, kinds of woods, but they can sound very different, work very different, and maybe require uh, different string length, different bridge length. Everything. What about the hardness and thickness of the bridge itself? I mean, that's that's one of those things that that influences... Uh, and that's the thing that has to transmit the energy right. to the sound board, so you right. want that to be as transparent as possible. Right? In other words, uh, not, to, not to damp any of that energy, but to just go right to, to the sound board. There's no way to not damp that energy. Yeah. And if you have something that is non-compressible and transmits the vibration better, um, then it's going to be very dense and it's going to contribute to the sustain problem. Like any musical instrument, a dulcimer is going to be a whole series of compromises and each maker and player may have a different idea of what, what that is. You can't necessarily set two instruments side by side and play one note on one and one note on the other and say, ah, oh, this one sounds better, that's the one I want to play. It's a matter of, well, it, it's a matter of what happens when you play music. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We can make a very attractive tone if we don't have to control the sustain. Mm -hmm. We can make a very short sustain if we don't have to make it sound attractive. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in the middle is a, is a middle ground where uh, we can play a wide variety of music on the dulcimer with a wide, wide variety of tonal effects and still have it all sound pretty, pretty good.
Bill Robinson and friends have performed at the Gebhard Woods Festival more than 50 times, and they've played all of our old-time dances. Over the years, Bill has entertained us on his dulcimer, fiddle, guitar, and mandolin. And guess what? He plays piano, too. So let's learn a special new tune from Bill Robinson. Well, this is my latest composition since we've been staying home with the virus being around. So uh, I call this cabin fever. And I'm going to give you the chords, and then I'll play it for you. But it starts out in the key of C to a D minor. again and start over again so C D minor E minor F C G C and the second part goes up to G back to C C G again Start again. So C, D minor, E minor, F, C, G, C. to play you cabin fever now on the dulcimer and I'm going to give you the, the simple notes with just one hand and we're going to play in the key of C so we'll go I'd like to introduce you to my niece, Cindy Robinson McClintock, and she wrote the words to my latest composition, The Cabin Fever.
Greetings, Diane Ipple speaking. I'm so sorry we can't share music this year at the festival. May you all remain healthy and may we bring renewed joy and energy in 2021. lovely round. So if you ever do it in the round, it's, it's an eight-part round. It's just beautiful. It's great. Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts. You got a lot of good Girl Scouts on there. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Which camp did you go to? Southern Hills, Buffalo, New York. Okay, so that's that's the song in, in D minor Aeolian, okay? But let's put the capo at the first fret. We're in D A D Okay. Right, let's just talk about this, okay, before we start playing. Alright, let's let's talk about this. Now all of you know how to say the alphabet, right? Who knows who, who doesn't know any music here? Does everybody know music? Oh, I'm just great. So we are in what then? If you tune to DAC, you're in D minor, right? But if you're in DAD and you capo up to the first fret, what scale are you going to get? D minor, okay? And so uh, we get E minor, we get Aeolian, and you also get Dorian, just like before. Okay, that's the Aeolian. But you also get Dorian because this is my friend. Ah, so we have Dorian. Okay. So we got so now we have E minor scale, and it's great it's really great because if you play with other musicians and I mean fiddlers, especially fiddlers, a lot of most fiddle tunes are in D, or they're in A, or they're in E minor. So now you've just got an E minor. You've got so you can jam with E minor fiddlers and just find a little riff to go with them. You don't even need to know the chords. Because it's just, you know, I love minor. It's just so easy. The drone manages everything.
how crazy you can get on that stuff. All right, we're done. All right. It took me two years to, to arrange, and I still can't play it. first time performer here at the festival. Please welcome Marsha Harris. I've heard what three times yesterday. So I thought I know you played it and Butch played it Butch and played Bill it. and Bill and his buddies played it. They did too. Good. I know. So I thought I want to play it too. I don't want to be left out. Cool. Hang the drill.
Rick. Many of you have probably practiced arpeggios or rolled chords horizontally in strips. You know, that sort of, those kind of diamond patterns that take you across the instrument. And one of the things I do is that whenever the melody is on the left treble, which B parts of lots of tunes are on the left treble, I'm always looking to my bass bridge over to the right, almost directly horizontal for my main harmony notes. And right there, you get more than an octave span. And you can also do three note chords as well, which we'll have you try later if you've never done that. So that's, that's basically um, what we're going to be doing here. <clears throat> you should all know what your bass notes are. Whether you're on a 12, 11, or 15, 14, or four octave, know your lowest notes because they are your friends. And play them often unless you're trying to sound really light because they will ring longer when you, um, I mean, I have a low A, an octave for a lot of people, and I like to play an A because if I hit that note and then you keep playing the higher A's, the harmonics keep the notes so cycling for quite a while. So one well-placed bass note might last you for four measures in a piece of music that you're playing above. It's almost like putting a gong. And in terms of the bass notes you're going to use, whatever key you're in, your root note, the first note of, the, of the, the name of the key, or an A, G, D, whatever it is, the lowest place on your dulcimer you have that note, take note of on your bass bridge. You know, for 12, 11s, G and A are going to be your main bass notes. And then also the fifth of, the, of whatever key you're in. So if you're in the key of D, your A is your fifth. And for 12, 11s, that's very important because you don't have a low D, you'll have to use your low A. But that's a pretty good secondary note. So most of the bass notes that you're going to be hitting to get a full deep bass is going to just be the root or the fifth of whatever key you're in. You don't have to know your whole bass bridge. You know, you can just know those bottom notes. And I think if nobody has a rim, your very bottom note on your bass bridge, you can play with the shank of your hammer, which is a trick I learned from Malcolm Douglas. You don't even need to put your hand all the way down. You can just, it's almost, in fact, try that. Whatever your bass note is, just, you just hit it with the middle of the hammer. So you only have to send your hammer down about half as far as normal. And it's pretty hard to miss. You don't have to look. That's something you should be able to do. That's your mouth note. That's, <clears throat> it's one of the reasons why my low note is an A. I, I gave up the note to have that low A. I sacrificed an F sharp which on this dulcimer was a G sharp, but um, if you, <laughs> I'd rather have the bass notes than all the scale notes at the bottom, because you're not going to be playing tunes at the bottom. You know, most of what I do is traditional music. It has a more open sound. My husband, who does a lot of jazz and classical, would not dream of giving up any of his chromatics <laughs> down there, because he uses them. But I play folk music. I play traditional music. I don't need to have a G sharp at the bottom. I need the A. <laughs>
Mike Anderson has been a friend of the Gebhard Woods Festival since the early years. He's devoted most of his life to teaching and entertaining young people. Who would write their master's thesis on social and economic diversity as shown through Itsy Bitsy Spider? Mike Wood. Hi everybody, Mike Anderson here. Sorry we're not at the festival, but I'm very happy to be on my porch and healthy and alive. And I hope you guys are too. When I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. They bust my hair, stole my comb. That's all right when I go home. Well, she is handsome, she is pretty. She's a belle of Belfast City. And she's a courtin' one, two, three. Oh, can you tell me who is she? says he loves her all the boys are vying for they're knocking at the door ringing the bell saying oh my true love are you well well out she comes as white as snow rings on her fingers and bells on her toes and don't jenny murphy says she'll die if she doesn't get the fellow with her open eye When I go home, the boys won't leave the girls alone. Just my hair, stole my combs, that's all right when I go home. Well, she is handsome, she is pretty, she's a belle of Belfast City. And she's a courtin', one, two, three, oh, can you tell me who is she? Let the wind and the rain, the hail blow high, snow come a tumbling from the sky. Cause she's as sweet as apple pie She'll find her own love by and by And when she finds a man of her own Won't tell her ma till she gets home Well, let them all come as they will It's Albert Mooney she loves still Tell my mom when I go home The boys won't leave the girls alone Once my hair stole my comb That's all right when I go home well, she is handsome, she is pretty, she's a belle of Belfast City. She's a courtin' one, two, three, oh, can you tell me who is she? Go heel to heel, toe to toe, and arm and arm and off we go, all for Mari's wedding. Well, over hill and up and down, Myrtle Green and Bracken Brown, past the pub and through the town, for the sake of Mari. Thanks for listening. 
see you in next year's festival, and I hope that cardinal in the tree behind me didn't disrupt you too much. Miracle of live performance. Thank you so much. Mike Anderson here. I wrote this song, Flying to Louisiana, to tell ghost stories. Uh, two tips, never play the bones on an airplane. <laughs> Second tip, never scream on an airplane. <laughs> really unnerves people. The uh, person next to me just, just went right up through the roof there. Anyway, here we go. It was late last night. Moon was shining bright. And shadows on the wall looked like a great big hairy spider. And then outside the window, I heard a scratching sound. Oh, good. And I saw that spider lick his lips like he was going to eat me. And then the wind began to blow. It whistled soft and low. And I saw that spider reach out like he was going to touch me. And so I dove beneath the blankets, pulled the pillow over my head. And I lay there a shaking waiting to be dead and then this big hairy arm reached up under the blanket it grabbed my big toe i began to scream <coughs> as good as we get <coughs> and then i kicked with my foot i kicked with all my might that great big hairy spider wouldn't eat me without a fight and then i peeked from under the blanket saw my cat fly through the air he bounced off the wall and ran away like he'd never been there. And then I looked at the spider. He was laughing at me. Take two. And then I looked at the spider. He was laughing at me. And he crawled off into the corner where he's waiting for me. It was late last night. The moon was shining bright. And shadows on the wall looked like a great big hairy spider. Ba 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 da da dum. Ba 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 da ba ba da da dum ba da da dum. Oh, good sound. Hi. Hello to everybody. Welcome to Park Woods Summer Festival. Have a good time. Thank you. No mosquito. No yes, it is. Are you enjoying yourself tonight? Oh, I certainly am. How many years have you been here? Sixteen? No, about five. Five. Okay. Well, we hope to see you on. You must be a hammered person, right? I'm very hammered. That's good. Hi. You have to be on our archives for Hands Archives. Jones, you have no no oh, choice in the matter. That's, that's Dana. <laughs> so anyway, like to make just come. There's a big one. I swear this was the best three dollar investment I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really horrible. But well, that's the way it's written. Exactly the way it's written. I mean, I may be playing different notes than it may be written, but I mean, it's, that's the way the tune is written. And that's not very musical. It's not very danceable. It isn't music. It's just a series of notes. To become music and to make it, give it some life, you have to do something else with it. Basically, what you can do, and most people, the hammer dulcimer people especially try and do, is make it more fancy. Making it more fancy isn't going to help. Uh, I mean, I don't do any fancy things, so it's very hard to, to, uh, to make it fancy. Um, so the other thing you do is, is play with loud and soft. You've got several different tools to work with. You can throw in some different notes, or you can make it not all one volume. Or, and here's the key, and it's very simple, to just the a first thing you can try and do in taking a tune like that to make it more interesting. 
instead of treating it as all eighth notes, think of it in a, as, as a dotted eighth and a sixteenth. I'll play it, I'll play it that way, and you'll see what I mean. Disagree? No. Good. I've got no disagreeers. Good. And that's a simple thing to do. You don't have to learn any new notes. You don't have to learn any hot licks. You don't have to learn any rolls, any arpeggios. All you have to do is have and change it to. Wait, now I'm not making anything louder or softer at this point. But just adding that one thing, right? Now that makes now it's no longer a reel. Now you see, I've made it into a hornpipe. Hornpipes are, have that rhythm to them, um, and it's not a hornpipe; it's a reel. So what do you do? Well, you don't put a full dot on the eighth note. You just put a little bit of a dot, and you don't make it just a sixteenth note. You get to make it a sixteenth and a half. So you get, in other words, uh, if you were to sing it the straight way, you'd say. Da 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 da. If you sing it this way, you get dum da dum dum da dum dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum. Okay, but if you sing it, do it this sort of halfway, you get da da dum da 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 Okay, see what's happening? It's the way you would lilt Irish or a lot of countries do mouth music. Okay. That just comes rolls off your tongue if you know the tune. Now the idea is how do you get that out of the instrument to make to change it from da 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 to so instead of a hornpipe you play it. And you don't go this far. You just go for halfway. As opposed to. thing to do with them when you sing it, you don't go, you go When you dance, you don't do it flat footed, you don't go dum da 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 you go dum da da watch the clog dancers or whatever. The emphasis is really a and when a fiddler plays your four potatoes at the beginning and they go they don't go Da 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 da. Right? They put that. That's the straight. Put the bounce in it. You got. Da 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 da. So when you put the little hit, the little almost hornpipe, along with an emphasis on the offbeat, you get. They're an amazing couple. They're good friends of mine. David and Annette Lindsay. Let's hear it for them, okay? okay. 
These are dance tunes that I learned from Bill Spence, great hammer and per player from upstate New York. The first one is Flyers of Edinburgh. The second one is Temperance Reel. We'll do that D, okay. I hope. And then we'll go back to G and do Swinging on a Gate, one of my favorite activities I had when I was a kid. Yep. Didn't we all? Didn't we all get in trouble for it, too? Yeah. So. The hinges on the gate were in trouble. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>
tell you something, what? If I knew the sky was going to open up like that, I would have chosen that louder song. So for my second song of the Irish set, I won't take it up a notch. Your watch is going to stop raining. As I was going over the far famed carry on, I had put Captain Farrell and his money. He was counting. I first produced me pistol, and then produced me great good. Thanks, and down the level for you. I'm all the steamer, but sure, we never knew that I'm up for the Danny O. Up for the Danny O. There's whiskey in the jar. Ah, you guys know what to do. He counted out his money, and it made a pretty penny. I put a in me pocket and gave it to me Jenny. She sighed and she swore that she never would deceive me. But the devil would take the woman for they never had to be easy. But sure, he never knew they would not. Hey, hey, hey. Walk for the daddy oh, Walk for the daddy oh, There's whiskey in the jar. I went to the TV chamber. Lord, it take a slumber. I took the golden jewels, and sure it was no wonder. But Jenny took my jewels, and she filled them up with water. And comfort kept it proud to be ready for the spider. But sure, you never knew that I'm not for the daddy oh, not for the daddy oh. There's whiskey in the jar. It doesn't taste very good, but it's water. <laughs> it was early in the morning before I rose to travel. On to all around me, and likewise Captain Farrell. I first produced me pistol, for she stole away me rapier. But I couldn't shoot the water so up her as there I was taken. Musher, he never knew, never knew. Not for the daddy oh, not for the daddy oh, it's whiskey in the jar. If anyone can aid me, it's my brother in the army. I think that he is stationed in Fort Moore in Killarney. And if he'll come and join me, we'll go run about Kilkenny. At least he treat me better than me, Tom and Sport and Jenny. But sure, he never knew that I'm not for the daddy oh, not for the daddy oh. There's whiskey in the jar, but sure, he never knew that I'm not for the daddy oh, not for the daddy oh. There's whiskey in the jar. Give yourself a hand. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, at least I got to play a little bit. Can I have the mic? Yeah, hi. Hey, I got to tell you folks, uh, there have been lightning strikes in the area. We got a tent here with four lightning rods, and we need to clear the tent, and we probably should clear the park. Um, hate to do it. But, well, it, it, see, it feels like it's almost done, but stuff's blowing up west of us. That's the problem. So it's going to keep happening. So, thanks so much for coming out. I'm glad we got as far as we did. Oh, won't you bring back, won't you bring back Mrs. Murphy's chowder It was too and full, every spoonful Made you your ladder Every evening, Uncle Ben Used to fill his fountain pen From a pour of Mrs. Murphy's chowder Ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup beans, string beans, floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, milk steak, summer cake, cream puffs, syrup muffs, many can be found. Silk cats, gourmets, bed sweats, Democrats, Cocoa Bell, doorbells, beckon you to die. Meatballs, fish balls, moth balls, candy balls. Come on in, the chowder is fine. Memories of the golden past and friends I used to know Take me to that boarding house where I lived years ago Every Friday evening we would gather in the hall Waiting for the greatest treat of all Won't you bring back, won't you bring back Mrs. Murphy's chowder it was tuneful, every spoonful made you yield louder. Every evening, Uncle Ben used to fill his fountain pen from a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. Ice cream.
cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup beans, string beans, float all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mist steak, summer cake, cream puffs, air muff, many can be found. Silk ass door mess, bed slats, democrats, coca bell, door bell, back to you to die. Meatballs, fish balls, moth balls, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder is fine. Oh, won't you bring back, won't you bring back Mrs. Murphy's chowder? With each helping, you'll be yelping for a headache powder. And if they have it where you are, you might find an Austin car in a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. Ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup, beans, string beans, floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mist steak, stomach cake, cream puffs, ear muffs, many to be found. Silk ass door mess, bed slash democrats, cocoa bell, door bell, back on you to die. Meatballs, fish balls, moth balls, cannonballs, come on in, the child is fine. Yeah. yeah. Twenty twenty was supposed to be Matthew Dickerson's first visit to the Gebhard Woods Festival. He's a national hammer dulcimer champion and a talented crowd pleasing performer. Let's enjoy Matthew Dickerson. Hi everybody, this is Matthew Dickerson and I'm outside in my backyard playing music for the Gebhard Woods Dulcimer Festival's thirtieth year anniversary. And uh, I've got a few tunes selected for y'all, and I just want to say thank you for having me, and uh, y'all stay safe during this quarantine, and enjoy. I'm going to start out with a song called, As I Skip Along. song I wrote uh, with lyrics and they go as I skip along I hear the birds sing their song is so sweet it makes me want to dance so being that it's such a beautiful day outside I thought I'd open that one, uh, open with that one for y'all <clears throat> I'll now play my wife's favorite tune who's not behind the camera love you uh, and this is also a song I wrote called moment of prayer it's meditation Thank you. 
was uh, coming off out. We recently had the video go viral online, so wanted to play it again today. And uh, another uh, crowd favorite, I'll play that rope. This is uh, this is leapfrog, and that's because of the way the notes bounce up and down. So, uh, uh, and, and of course, with a song like leapfrog, it would start like this. much everybody. So as, as Ed Trickett is getting set up, uh, I want to direct your attention to page 37 of the program book. 
And I'm going to ask Mr. Neil Peck if he would come join us on stage for a minute. Neil will ascend to the step platform that he built last year for this festival. So if you go to page 37, uh, we, we have a, a page dedicated to Mr. Neil Peck. And it reads, I'll, I'll read bits and pieces of it at least. The Gebhardt Woods Dulcimer and Traditional Music Festival wishes to thank Neil Peck for his many years of stewardship and service to the dulcimer community and to our event. Neil's been playing mountain dulcimer since 1984 and is the founding father of the South Suburban Dulcimer and Folk Music Society. He's well known for his virtuoso dulcimer performance and beautiful singing voice. And it goes on to talk about some of the roles that, that, that Neil has filled with um, both the Gebhard Woods Festival and Hands of Illinois, which is the organization that sponsors the festival. Uh, Neil is a former um, uh, program coordinator, it was called. I guess artistic director would be, would be now. Um, he's a, he was a, a festival coordinator from 2007 to 2011. Um, joined Hands in 2002 on the board, a board of Hands, um, and he was president of Hands from uh, 2012 until he retired from the board last year. Um, I met Neil in the spring or winter of 2010, and that was when um, I had come to the festival in 2009. It was my first time here. I was here for about half of Sunday and um, had just a wonderful time, and I knew I wanted to come back. And the 2010 festival time was kind of approaching, and I had a little note on my calendar. I'm going to, you know, get the dates and all that. And the festival had been canceled. Uh, there was some uh, financial issues, and um, much much of it not in, in control of the organ of the of the organization. And the festival was canceled. And 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 I inquired if they would be coming back, and and somebody asked me if I wanted to join the committee and. You know, here I am. So, but but at the time, but I so I met Neil in those first meetings when uh, Hans was trying to figure out if we were even going to have another festival. And and Neil was the was the coordinator at the time. He'd been for a few years, um, and he was very friendly to me. Um, and I learned that you know he's the coordinator, and he he kind of wouldn't mind not being coordinator anymore. Um, but what I learned over time is that uh, nice is just what he is. He just, that's, that's who Neil is. And any of you who know him, that's, he's just a nice, friendly, warm guy who likes to get people involved and likes to be involved himself. Um, uh, one thing it says in here is, is his concern for detail uh, has been his hallmark, always making sure the festival was excellent and enjoyable for participants. Uh, we were sad to see Neil leave the board um, we're glad he's here today because we get to we get to we get to honor you. Um, I have one special thing for you. So the we there is the Gebhardt Woods Dulcimer Festival. The, the official friends of the festival uh, mugs they have them over at the tent. You can get one probably pretty cheap. Um, we've had we've had them for a little while, um, but uh, but we want to make sure that Neil understands. Uh, th we've annotated this one. He is an official best friend of the festival, and that is for Neil. Thank you so much. So, so Donna um, and Neil, Neil was also, like I said, he was president of Hands until last year. Uh, that person is now Donna Tufano, and she is here also. She wants to, wants to thank you. And it is my great honor to present a plaque to Neil for his in appreciation for dedicated service to Gebhard Woods Dulcimer and Traditional Music Festival. Thank you, Neil, for all you've done. I, and without words, except to say that I actually paid for this cup a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a cup that um, I think we started giving to people who became friends of the festival. But anyway, this is really lovely, an honor that, goodness gracious, it, it, I'm speechless, but thank you very much. Thanks to you, and thank all of you for this.
for this moment. Thank you. When Neil suffered a stroke and passed away about a year later, his dear friend Mark Wyclaw approached Hands to help create a scholarship fund in Neil's name for students of Hammer Dulcimer and Mountain Dulcimer. This year, we congratulate the very first recipients of the Neil Peck Memorial Scholarships. They are Judy Hammerberg of Lombard, Illinois, and Stephanie Amos of Homer Glen, Illinois. everyone. I'm Stephen, the board president of Hands of Illinois. Recently at home, I've been playing spirituals, like Wade in the Water. In these times, music is something that can lift us up and help us to a better future. We hope that our virtual festival can help us all too. And we also hope that you can support our festival musicians. Thank you very much. And again, we hope to see you all at the 2021 festival. years ago and we're just delighted to have him back. Please welcome Butch Ross. But this song, it was instrumental. I didn't have a title for it. It's tougher for me. I write songs with words and it's easy to write songs, come up with titles for songs with words if the chorus of the song is 
goes, she loves you, yeah, 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 you're probably going to call the song she loves you or yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, anyways, you're not going to call it, you know, uh, you're not going to call it like how to turn a greater empire into a lesser one or something like that. So, so I was watching this, I was, I was rehearsing the song and I was watching my cat stare out the window the way that cats do. And so for a while, this song was called All Day Long, The Cat Dreams of Freedom. <laughs> and I just call it bird watching. It's the same thing. <laughs>
even if it's just for tonight. I'm glad that we're together. quite so good and the third year I opened the door and this wall of sound hit me and I turned around and left and so I, I tend to like them smaller I tend to like the people that do different types of things uh, a normal jam session will take if, and if you ever run into this uh, they take breaks there'll be usually there'll be one guy that's kind of running things and he'll start the song, or it'll, it'll pass around the circle, and say, I will start the song, and I will be playing the lead, everybody else will be doing backup. And then I'll look at the fiddler, or the banjo player, or the hammer dulcimer player, or whoever, and say, you take a break. Then I'll do the backup for it, they've got the lead. When they get done with it, then I'll pick somebody else out. And everybody gets a turn to take the lead, do what they want to do, embellish it how they want to embellish it. And rather than everybody competing to play the loudest and nobody can hear what anybody else is doing, you can't even hear what your own instrument's doing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you ever run into a jam session, that's a normal jam session, that's what it's all about. And I was taking a workshop from a lady out in California, and it was a week long thing down at Mountain View. And then one day this lady come in and she told this story about she had ended up in a jam station the night before. And she said she thought she was playing pretty good. And she said, uh, she said before they started this one song, uh, the one guy looked at her and asked her if she could take a break. She says, yeah, I suppose so. And she says, I wonder why you wanted me to take a break. I thought I was playing pretty good. <laughs> and so they started playing, and pretty soon he looked at her and asked her to take a break. She just quit. She thought that's what she he wanted. wanted. <laughs> and I guess he said something afterwards. He says, uh, what are you doing? She says, take a break. <laughs> he says, no, 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 no. He says, when you take a break, you're taking the lead. That's what that means. So. So anyway, that's the difference between a dulcimer jam and a normal jam.
Sandy and Dina and Stephen Lee Rich have had to spend the last few months isolated in different states. But they've sent along some unreleased video from their pre-pandemic period. Here are Andina and Rich. Cheer up. There's a sunrise on the mountain. Only wish that you were here to see it. the body and the spirit But I'm here alone with just my rifle Far, far fence and not your wedding day Living with the bullet and the Bible Wondering if I'll live to tell the tale I see skiers on that mountain And I bet you 50 shekels they are laughing I swear they look just like my fellow soldiers But for all the fun that they are having I don't watch my back as I go strolling Just can't be too careful where I stride Side. Is there someone just like me, missing someone just like you? Does he hate and fear me just because I am a Jew? Does he wonder every day if I blow his tongue away? Does he break his vigil only long enough to pray? Just like you, missing someone just like me, living in this nightmare, which is our reality. Does she want to if he might go out walking late one night and vanish into nothing long before the morning light? Sheila. Yeah. Brighter than the holy fire Turning all the dark as my tobacco Never really seeming to expire We need strength and power on our borders Oh, but I want me so badly I can taste it Tell me just what is the natural order for anybody who's ever been told you're too old to do something you know you can't do that all right one two three two two three <laughs> But that doesn't mean that I have run out of time You let me old as I But open your mouth, warm up your hands And let your heart fly 
This is Peggy with Gebhardt Woods Dulcimer Festival. I'm missing you all this year, and I look forward to everyone coming back next year with a big bang. See you then. I don't, I haven't figured out a place to use this, but it, it's, it, it would be great for like a soundtrack of a spooky movie yeah. or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's a, that's a cool sound there, and it's used in there for suspense. Um, Rie La Bouche, it starts off, um, Usually uh, have a choir singing this song really on top of Creating a wash. A shank shot. And this is just. Tune becomes a dance, or a dance becomes a tune. <laughs> um, it's just... Uh, it's, that's the left hand pattern. And then you're hitting the shank here, so you're going... using the shanks and getting a, a rhythmic pattern going and then just changing changing the chords within that pattern. Because it's, it's realizing that the uniqueness of the instrument is to get these different percussive type of effects. They're here from the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. We'd love to have them. Please welcome Steve and Ruth Smith. Thank you.
Thank you. So this is a little tune that I wrote to welcome you all to come to our part of the country. It's called Blue Ridge Mountain Sky. If you want to do some living, the directions I'll be given will lead you to a place I'd like to share. Up to the Appalachian Mountains lead, the city is small behind you, and soon you'll breathe that Blue Ridge Mountain air. But now our high country winters will surely make you shiver, and the foggy rainy days can make you cry. But there's no one in the world who would ever think of leaving when they stand beneath the Blue Ridge Mountain sky. Standing in a holler with a coon hound baying yonder, smelling country ham, curing in the shed. And the evening fog is singing round the mountain like a collar. The endless song of crickets in your head Sometimes it seems like a dream To be lost inside such beauty But to see is to believe you can't deny But there's no one in the world Who would ever think of leaving When they stand beneath the Blue Ridge Mountain sky So no matter where you're from, we'd be proud just to have you visit. Come and sit a spell with us and feast your eyes. And when it comes time to leave, well, you know you're always welcome to come back and share our Blue Ridge Mountain sky. You can come back and share our Blue Ridge Mountain sky. Well, you can come back and share a Blue Ridge Mountain sky. Do that, and you can switch. We'll play through a couple times, and you might want to put them in the A part, but not the B part, or maybe leave the A part straight and then stick them in the B part. Just mix it up, and I'll let everybody just kind of select however you want to do it. We'll see what it sounds like when, we, when everyone just kind of is doing a different thing with those related minors. If you finger it right, it should be over. Give me four beats. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. straight and then the next time maybe like the A part I might stick one of those related minors in and then the next time I take that back out and maybe put them in the B part and then just try to find different ways because I have a short attention span and I'll just get really bored <laughs> if I don't. And you know if you're playing for an audience 
you don't want them to go off to sleep on you either. If you play the same way five times in a row, after about the second or third time, they're going to say, oh, they know what's coming, and they're not going to listen anymore. So you don't want that to happen either. So you want to find some way to keep their attention, and this is an easy way to do it. Lead is back, turn with a ride. And a left hand back. Two hands around. Now what? Swing. And promenade. Lead is slip. Two hands. Do si do. Old and gold slippers. Bonnie. Let's. Ladies, back turn with right. Left hand back. Do si do. Oh, I missed something, didn't I? Swing. And promenade. Lead is slip clutch. Swing your partner. And promenade. Play is back with a right hand turn. And left hand back. Two hands around. Then you know, Sudo. Swing that partner. And promenade. So what would Santa's kid brother be doing hanging out on Mike Anderson's front porch? Let's find out. Here's Hugo Kringle. This is Hugo Kringle, I'm Santa Claus's little brother. The last couple of years I've been honored to teach a couple of workshops at the festival. I was honored to be a, asked to be a part of this as well. It's a song I wrote about two weeks ago. Hope you like it. It's pretty easy, so you might want to sing along with it as well. That's what, that's what music for the holidays is all about besides all the honoring of the Lord anyway well I didn't get a piano for Christmas didn't get a drum or a bell didn't get a set of bagpipes probably just as well but I got a ukulele for Christmas a u u u ukulele Got a ukulele for Christmas. It's a ukulele Christmas now. Well, I didn't get a puppy for Christmas. Didn't get a cat or a fish. Didn't get a hippopotamus, probably just as well. But I got a ukulele for Christmas, a u u u ukulele. Got a ukulele for Christmas, 
it's a ukulele Christmas now. I didn't get an apple for Christmas. Didn't get an orange or some of those pistachio type nuts. No. And I didn't get a great big eggplant. Probably just as well. But I got a ukulele for Christmas. A u u u ukulele. Got a ukulele for Christmas. It's a ukulele Christmas now. Pipes, probably just as well. But I got a ukulele for Christmas. A u u u ukulele. Got a ukulele for Christmas. It's a ukulele Christmas now. just learn how to play it. See you at next year's festival, folks. Hugo Kringle, signing off. The harmonic is a, is a note an octave below the where you want to sound. And the principle of vibrating strings is any string divided exactly in half, if either half is played, will stop up exactly one octave. So our hands being made the way they are, what you do is divide, you'll want to do this in your left hand, down an octave from where you're playing in the right hand to get the double. You have to stop, push into the string with the base of your thumb, that's one place to do it, there's several places to do it, and pluck the top half with your thumb. And it, there's a timing problem. You have to pluck a split second before you take the heel of your hand off. You can't take the heel off first because then you won't get the harmonic. So I'm going to demonstrate it. Well, maybe this is the best one because this is a big part. If I have that G, oh. and, and I want to divide it in half, if I wanted to sound this note, You have to know where the halfway point of the string is. Yeah. If you get it wrong, you're not going to get anything. You have to have good eyes. Okay, well, you also have to follow the harmonic curve right. when you go. When you go, so you you I'll probably better show it. It's several ways. Push in with the heel that down here, heel of the thumb, and then what you do is you push into the string and break back. If the breaking creates the proper timing. If you wait too long, you'll just get a thud. Don't, if you take the heel off first, you won't get the harmonic. That's how it works. It is actually. So I'm going to go around and show each person individually how to do it. He's the dulcimer players can get angry. Well, you can do the you can do harmonics on a dulcimer. Well, it's easy for them to play doubles with the mallets. Right. Yeah. You but if they want to know how to do harmonics. Oh, you can show them? Oh, cool. Do you know how to do that? Okay. I was going to get like this. I was touching it up.
Hello, Dulcimer friends. I was really looking forward to seeing all of you again at the festival this year. In case you don't recognize me, I'm Marilee Zajek, the one who's in charge of the festival raffle. We've probably met in past years, but since it just isn't going to happen this year, I'll tell you a little bit about what we had planned. We've had a record number of donations this year. Many new and truly unique items have been given to us, but they're all in good hands and we'll be waiting for you in 2021. If you haven't attended the festival before, be sure to stop by the raffle booth and check out all the wonderful items that might be yours. Meanwhile, don't fret, just string along with all the rest of us. And just like we end each of our festivals, until we next see you, safe home may you go. Be happy, be well, be safe, and see you next year. Bye for now. Safe home, safe home, safe home will you go When the light of the moon sat down on your road Safe home, safe home, safe home will you go Until we next see you, safe home will you go We've laid down our worries our troubles, our fears, like shells on the strand, washed by laughter and tears. The tide has returned now to lift us away, back to our houses and family we pray. Say home, say home, say home. So that's our video celebration to commemorate our 30 Gebhard Woods festivals. We hope you enjoyed it. And may we all be together next year at this time at Gould Park in Morris, Illinois for the 31st Gebhard Woods Dulcimer and Traditional Music Festival. Thank you for watching. Sailor, what do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you 
to do with a broken saber early in the morning. Wake ho, and up she rises. Wake ho, and up she rises. Wake ho, and up she rises early in the morning. Wait, oh, and up she rises, early in the morning. 